Okay, then let's make a start to discuss on the manufacturing processes for polymetric composites here. Here, there's a list of abbreviated terms that are used uh, within this, uh, the lecture content actually. So uh, I might be using these abbreviated terms uh, the, during the lecture. So then it would be good for you to have some kind of uh, the understanding uh, on these abbreviated terms. For example, SMC refers to sheet molding compound. Likewise, I might be using these abbreviated terms uh, throughout the content of this lecture. So therefore, please go through this list of abbreviated terms. Before we start in the discussion on the manufacturing of uh, the composites, I would like to highlight uh, the, some of the, the composite fabrication techniques uh, that are often common to uh, the many of the processes that I'm going to discuss, or it could these could be common to most of the composite manufacturing techniques uh, that I'll be discussing uh, in this course unit actually. So normally in the most of the manufacturing processes, reinforcements are arranged. So then we discuss or we decide uh, the volume, uh, the ratio or volume fraction of the reinforcements to be used with the composite structure. At the same time, we have to decide the geometry, if it's a long fiber or it could be mats or individual fibers or how we're going to align them in the axial direction or with some angles. So then we have to design, or we have to arrange it during the manufacturing of composites, uh, the uh, structures. But if you use powder foam or particle foam or the short fibers, uh, the, this uh, alignment or the arrangement could be random, but we can make some uh, the uh, specific uh, processing conditions to make sure that uh, to align the fibers in the way that we want. For example, to enhance the alignment of the fibers in the processing directions, we can control some of the, the processing parameters to get the desired alignment. So, but it is again uh, quite difficult, but we can just uh, the influence the arrangement of the, the reinforcements during the manufacturing if we understand the processing behavior or the flow behavior, right? And also uh, another common feature would be the reinforcements and the matrix are both together against a tool. So that's what we call the mold of the, uh, the manufacturing of a component. Uh, for example, now we're going to discuss lots of techniques. So we have to have some kind of uh, the tool called the mold. So mold is the device uh, that is created to the shape of the component that we need to manufacture. So then we can just lay the reinforcements and then inject the, the uh, resin uh, in the liquid form, or we can compress the material into the mold. Uh, so to create the desired shape, therefore the reinforcements and the matrix materials are both together against the mold in most of the manufacturing processes. So uh, these processes could be one-sided components or two-sided components. That means the mold could create a good surface uh, in one side only, or it could be two-sided component. That means we're going to close the mold so then we can have the two surfaces which are in good finish. So however, in most of the cases, we use a mold to get the desired shape of the composite, uh, the component that we're going to manufacture. And also we have to apply heat and pressure. Sometimes both of them are together simultaneously uh, to consolidate the resin fibers and to cure the resin actually. So therefore application of the heat and pressure are quite common in most of the manufacturing processes uh, in composite industry uh, to just uh, the consolidate the structure and also to cure the, uh, the resin material uh, within the structure. So uh, that is also a common feature. For example, we can use autoclaves if you use some uh, the pre-impregnated uh, the uh, structures or otherwise the, uh, we can just specialize the components like for example compression molding or injection molding we use uh, high pressure and high temperature uh, to manufacture the composite structures and also we have to remove the component from the tooling that is from the mold so after removing the component manufactured uh, from the mold so sometimes we have to go for some kind of uh, the final finishing uh, stages that means we have to just uh, the take off the flash material or maybe just we have to take off the edges, round them up. So we have to uh, get into some kind of uh, the uh, operations to uh, the uh, finalize the, the manufactured product by just making uh, the, the a few operations or sometimes. So sometimes we have to just uh, get the product into another production line to uh, assemble with another uh, component to make uh, like a complex component and so on. So therefore uh, we should have some kind of uh, the uh, procedures to follow after removing the material from the, uh, the tooling or from the mold uh, for most of the uh, uh, ma composite manufacturing processes. But there could be some processes with minimum level of uh, the uh, final finishing stages, for example, in injection molding. So the final finishing could be really uh, less. Uh, so we're going to get the final product uh, to the near net shape. So then therefore we might not have a considerable level of uh, the final finishing stages. But for some processes, we have to just uh, do some 
kind of cleaning and uh, the finishing of stages after manufacturing the composite component or means after removing the product from the mold. And also we can classify the composite manufacturing process into two main types as direct processes and indirect processes. The idea of the direct processes means the use of separate reinforcements and racing, which are brought together at the point of fabrications. That means there is no pre-preparation of the material. So we just try to uh, the, use the reinforcements and the matrix material at the time of the production of the component. So we brought them together at that point without doing any pre preparations. For example, I'm going to discuss spray up or uh, the manual layup. So the, those processes, so we're going to get the material uh, when we manufacture the component, there is no any pre preparation for the materials actually. Right, and the indirect processes. So most of the cases we use uh, the pre impregnated reinforcement. So otherwise we call uh, the pre -prex. So those are the type of uh, the material actually that we manufactured uh, and then we can store them and then we can use them whenever we need. For example, we can have the carbon fiber prefix. That means we have the, the resin within the reinforcement structure. So, but those resins are not cured yet. Okay, so then uh, when we want to manufacture the component, we can lay the, the, the uh, prefix within the mold. And then after that, so we can apply some heat and pressure to cure the resin material. So therefore we have to uh, store these, uh, the prefix material within a certain conditions uh, to avoid uh, the uh, premature, uh, the curing of the resin, right? So then you understand the idea now, the indirect processes, we use prepegs. So those will have the uh, resin material within the structure or the, within the reinforcements already, but those uh, the resins are not yet cured. So therefore we can apply the temperature and pressure after laying those prepegs within the mold. So then we can have the final structure after curing the resin in the proper way, using the proper temperature and pressure. And also it's really important to understand during the composite manufacturing, component design and material selection often strongly influence the choice of the fabrication process. So that means although we have lots of uh, the reinforcements available, we cannot use all the manufacturing techniques with the, all the forms or all the sorts of uh, the reinforcements or the materials. For example, if you use uh, the uh, long fibers, you might not use the injection molding process. For the injection molding process, if you want to manufacture some uh, composite component, we can use the powder foam, the particulate foam, or the short fibers. So we can't use the long fibers in the injection molding process. So likewise, so uh, the, the materials and the reinforcements that we can use for uh, composite manufacturing are mostly or strongly dependent upon the, uh, the manufacturing process actually. So therefore, uh, once we have the manufacturing techniques, we can decide which type of material and reinforcement that we can use and which form they should be in, right? So therefore the, the, uh, the choice of the component or the choice of the design and material selection uh, is, is strongly influenced by the choice of the fabrication process. So that is something we should follow during the manufacturing of composite processes. And also, as I mentioned before, at some point, it is vital to recognize that the material and the structure are created at the same time. So then the composite material and the structure or the component are being fabricated or manufactured at the same time. So that is why we can control the properties by aligning the reinforcements or the fibers in the desired directions or mixing the, the uh, reinforcements and the, the matrix material in the proper ratios uh, to get the tailor-made properties. Okay, therefore these could be some of the common features for many of the composite, uh, the manufacturing techniques could have uh, uh, regardless the, the type of material or the uh, the type of the product that you're going to manufacture. Right, let's focus into different type of uh, the polymetric composite manufacturing techniques. So then let's say composite processing, we can categorize into uh, two main types based on the matrix material that we're going to use. It could be thermoset composites uh, based on the thermoset material or thermoplastic composite uh, based on the, uh, the thermoplastic polymers. So uh, the thermosets uh, cures irreversibly and thermoplastic, we can reprocess uh, quite a few times if you use the, uh, the polymeric material uh, in their neat or the virgin state, right? So then after that, again, after just selecting the material type, so we can again classify them into short fibers or into continuous fibers for both types actually, right? So then as I mentioned before now, so then we have a number of processes that we can use with thermosetting material with short fibers and likewise, thermosetting continuous fibers. Okay, so uh, therefore we have to de just decide uh, the, the, the type of material to be used based on the manufacturing process. 
Okay, right. For example, now short fibers with thermoset. So then we can use SMC, a sheet molding compound, SRIM, BMC, spray up injection molding, vacuum bag molding, and so on. And also with the, the thermosets, uh, with the continuous fiber reinforcements, we can use filamentoid in full torsion, RTM, resin transfer molding, and likewise, there are several other processes. In the same way, uh, the, we have some manufacturing processes for the short fibers and continuous fibers for the thermoplastic materials as well, right? Actually, I'm not going to look at all of these processes. Of these processes, I'm going to uh, look at only some selected manufacturing techniques which are important or which are commonly used uh, in the current industry, actually. So here, these are the processes that I'm going to discuss in this part of the lecture, actually. So SMC, sheet molding compound, spray up, injection molding, vacuum bag molding, and resin transfer molding, hand layup. Lay up. Mostly, uh, these processes are related to the thermoset, uh, the polymers, actually. Or otherwise, you could say thermoset-based uh, polymetric composites. And then injection molding and compression molding, which could be related to the thermoplastic materials as well. So these are the main processes that I'm going to look at uh, for this uh, the course uh, in terms of the manufacturing of polymetric composites. Okay, then let's make a start with the hand layer process, which is one of the uh, simplest and commonly used uh, the techniques to manufacture polymetric composites. In this process, actually, mostly we use a contact molding. So that means the composites are cured in contact with a mold uh, with some sort of external pressure. So here you can see the process, how it is being done actually. So you can see that the fabrics or the, the, uh, the mats are laid within the mold. You can see the mold. So that is the mold cavity is the shape of the, uh, the product that we need. So normally we use the matte or fabric, usually uh, the, the glass fibers, uh, the, that is the most commonly used type. And also the resin could be thermosetting, mostly the polyester, right? So then initially what we normally do then, we just try to get the mold prepared to the, the, the shape that we need. And after that, so then uh, the, we can just lay the, the, uh, the fabric material or the reinforcements in the fabric form or the mat form into the mold uh, like this. So you can see this is the reinforcement material. So then we can just prepare the resin material into the desired viscosity. And then we can apply the resin material on top of the reinforcement using a roller like this, or otherwise we can spray it. And then after that, we can just uh, the roll it out or otherwise we can spray it up and then roll it out and then we can make sure that it's evenly distributed across the reinforcement, right? right? So that is the basic, uh, the arrangement or the basic procedure of the process. So let's try to recognize these steps a bit more clearly. So now we know that we have the mold. So that is the desired shape into the desired size. Okay, so then uh, we just try to uh, the, the pre-cut the fabric material into the desired, desired size. So then you can see that so depending on the size of the mold, so then we have, uh, we have to cut it down into the desired size. And then uh, after that, we just try to lay it up. Okay, so sometimes during the manufacturing process, the structure could stick into the mold very firmly. So then there might be some problems to release the, the, uh, the component from the mold uh, at the end. So therefore we might use some mold release agents uh, to make it easy for to release the part at the end of the manufacturing or at the end of the curing process. And also we can add some coating layers uh, to get a good surface finish and also to avoid resin penetration to the surface of the uh, of the product, right? Okay, so based on the nature of the, the resin material and the, uh, the fabric or the reinforcement material, so we have to take these actions actually, okay? So applying some uh, the more release agents and also applying some coating layers to get some good surface finish and also to avoid the penetration of the, the resin material into the surface of the product, right? And also depending on the thickness or the dimension of the product that you want to manufacture, you have to decide how many layers of reinforcement should be laid on the mold, right? So we just uh, the, uh, the place or the lay one layer and then we apply the, the, ma the matrix material in, in the liquid form. And then we just uh, distribute uh, the uh, throughout the, the mold evenly. And then if you want uh, the higher thicknesses, so then we can apply another layer of reinforcements and then apply the resin matrix. And likewise, so then until you get the required thickness or the, uh, the required dimensions of the component, so then you can use number of uh, the layers of reinforcements and apply the, the, uh, the resin uh, material on top of those reinforcements uh, to get the desired thickness or the desired dimensions. Sometimes we could use a paint brush to apply the resin material or otherwise we can use a roller uh, to apply it properly and evenly. By doing so, we can just uh, release the entrapped air uh, within the the, uh, the structure 
to avoid any possible porosity in the structure, right? So therefore, it's really important to uh, the apply the resin material within the, the, the structure, avoiding any entrapped air or air bubbles within the structure uh, to get the desired properties. So therefore, experience is really important here to even distribute uh, the matrix material within the structure to get more homogeneous distribution of the racing uh, into the component. So therefore, uh, the, the, the properties of the product uh, could uh, depend on the experience of the, uh, the operator of this process actually. Right, in terms of the manufacturing of the product, uh, that's it. So then we just uh, cut the, the reinforcement into desired size, lay it up, and then after that, we apply the, the, uh, the resin material. Uh, it could be number of layers of the reinforcements, and then we apply the resin material to, on top of each layer, and then we set it to cure uh, to the desired uh, the time limit, and then we release the uh, component from the mold. So that's it. One of the main issues with this process would be that because it is mainly done by the operator, and then it is a really open process and then we just try to uh, the, the, uh, lay the resin material on top of the mold uh, into different layers of reinforcements. Here some of the resins could be really volatile and then it could be evaporated into the air and also at the same time uh, the, the, it could just get into the body of the, uh, the, uh, uh, the operators or the people uh, within the uh, work, workshop. Right. So therefore uh, if you use some materials like polyester resins, so they have the styrene matrix that could cause some uh, serious health issues. So therefore, is the proper ventilation is required, and also the workers might use some kind of proper masks and then other protective devices to avoid possible contact or inhalation of the styrene uh, the fumes uh, in, into their body. So uh, this issue uh, relating to the fumes and the operation of the, the uh, material could be a main issue in this type of manufacturing process, actually. And here there's a nice video to explain the procedure of the hand layer process to manufacture polymetric composites. Wet layup is the most common manual method of making fiber reinforced plastic matrix composites with thermosetting resins far more widely used than thermoplastic resins. Before layup, a mold release or parting agent is applied to the mold to ease removal of the composite part afterwards. Common release agents include silicone, polyvinyl alcohol, fluorocarbons, and water-based solvents. A layer of catalyzed resin is often applied to the release coated mold and allowed to cure to the gel or tacky state before the reinforcement is applied. This so-called gel coat is a protective surface layer through which reinforcement fibers do not penetrate. Special gel coat resins can improve flexibility, blister and stain resistance, toughness, and weatherability. As the gel coat cures, the reinforcement material, typically in the form of cloth or mat, is prepared for application by impregnation with liquid resin. This is referred to as pre-wetting. The pre-wetted reinforcement material is then carefully placed on the coated mold surface to minimize distortion during transfer. More reinforcement material and resin are applied as needed in this manner until required part thickness has been built up. Typically, the pre-wetted material is hand rolled to achieve uniform distribution and to remove entrapped air. I hope you understand the importance of using a coating layer to get a good surface finish. And otherwise, uh, the reinforcement material could be visible through the surface of the component. So therefore, application of the, the coating layer could be uh, required uh, with a kind of certain thickness. And also, you can understand that with this process, we can have one-sided component. So that means uh, so we cannot get a good surface finish in the both surfaces, only the, the side facing the mold uh, surface uh, could have a nice surface finish, uh, not the other side. So therefore, the type of applications could depend on uh, those type of uh, the, the products that we need only one sided surface. So then uh, here you can see the link to the video if you would like to watch that in YouTube actually. If I try to summarize what you need uh, to manufacture some component using hand layer process, so this is what all you might need for this type of process actually, it's really simple. So you need to have operator. 
So then you will have the reinforcement material, then the resin material into the desired viscosity. Okay, so then after that, the mold. So that is the shape of the component that you need to manufacture. And then after that, so you have a brush. So then you can apply the resin uh, properly within the reinforcement or into the reinforcement. And then after that, you might need a roller to distribute the resin material evenly uh, throughout the reinforcements and also to the, avoid the entrapped air to get a homogeneous distribution and uh, to get a homogeneous structure of the uh, composite uh, part that you manufacture. Okay, this is all what you need to manufacture uh, a component using hand layer process, but you can understand that experience of the operator should be really important to avoid any porosity or any unevenness of the structure uh, manufactured using this technique, right? If you try to look at the advantages, it's cheap technique to set up. So of course you can understand uh, that we need some very basic uh, stuff to uh, the, uh, carry out the process and it is quite flexible. So then once you have the mold, uh, the creator to the desired shape. So then you can lay the, the, the reinforcements and then after that you can apply the matrix materials into the desired thickness uh, until you just uh, read the required dimensions. And then low cost tooling, of course, yeah, the tooling might not be expensive. So then you can see, you can buy all of these with a uh, couple of uh, the hundred pounds actually. And then easy to master after short training. Yeah, of course. So uh, it is not a dedicated, uh, the process to be just uh, the, be experienced with. So then uh, you can just practice uh, quite a, a few times very quickly, and then you can be like expert in the hand layer process. And uh, the no limit by size and shape. Actually, so uh, the, you have to understand what I mean here. So if you can get a kind of uh, the good level of mold, so then uh, the, you can have very large components as well, uh, depending on the thickness or the depending on the strength or the depending on the properties that you need from a structure. Right, so then it's not limited to small components. You can go for some large level of uh, the components if you can have a mold uh, for that product actually. So those are the main advantages relating to the process. So then some of the possible disadvantages, of course, the one of the key issues with the emissions or the fumes uh, they produce during the manufacturing process. So this could be uh, considerable. If you if you remember from the video, uh, the, the most of the operators are using some protective devices like uh, the masks and gloves and so on to avoid uh, the some possible uh, the inhalation of the fumes and also to get uh, to avoid the contact of these materials with the skin and so on, right? And also, as I mentioned, you can have only one-sided component. So then you will have a good surface finish only this side of the component which is facing the mold surface, right? Okay. Quality could be uh, dependent upon the operator actually. So then if you don't do it properly, so then you might not get the desired properties, okay? Especially uh, there could be some porosity if you just uh, get some air uh, trapped inside the, uh, the, the structure, right? And also it might take lots of time. So because it's a really manual layer process, so then it could take uh, the long time to manufacture a given product depending on the size and the thickness that you need from the component. Right, okay, so that's all about the hand layer process. So then uh, the, the, uh, it is a really simple technique, but you can have uh, the composite part manufactured uh, into a kind of good level of uh, the different uh, sizes scales and also without having much more experience or expertise uh, into the process. So you can easily learn and then apply it and then get it done uh, with some kind of uh, the cheap labor and without having much more initial capital cost, okay?